Hello there, my little darlings. Oh, sorry about that. I just couldn't help myself there at the beginning. Welcome back, you guys. It's Daniel here again, and today I have decided since in a few weeks' time I'll be seeing Queen plus Adam Lambert playing. It's going to be the first time ever I'm going to be able to see Queen, well, Queen plus. Uh, I figured I might as well start doing a review of each album in the band's discography. Since I've been a Queen fan for many, many years, naturally, given the look, so that's why it's, I look a little bit different now for the next few weeks going forward. So, with that, obviously, we need to start right at the beginning, and that, of course, is with the album released back in July 1973, and that, of course, is Queen's self-titled debut. Now, of course, you obviously have Brian May on guitar, John Deacon on bass, Roger Meadows Taylor on drums, and... Farouk Bulsara or Freddie Mercury on lead vocals. So, Queen self titled debut. Um, this one is very interesting because I think most people kind of tend to think of Queen as this kind of pop rock band, you know, with the elements of punk, gospel, rockabilly, vaudeville, whatever. Uh, it definitely has, they definitely have a very diverse. Discography, discography, well, at least in terms of their songs. Uh, their self-titled debut, I find to be a much, kind of more interesting as time goes on, because obviously it doesn't have any really big hits off it. It's definitely a much more of a hard rock record with, with some proggy elements to it. And so this one to me is very, very interesting. Uh, and of course the album was in case you don't know the history of the band, I mean, take everything from the Bohemian Rhapsody movie with a grain of salt, because as a massive Queen fan, I kind of know the, know the backstory. Like, this album was pretty much recorded during studio dead time. So they were like, okay, we just need to sit out and wait, wait between the... We have 30 minutes here, maybe it's 40 minutes there. So they basically had to record the album pretty much in like I said in the in the space between other bands had their recording sessions so this one is definitely has kind of a demo -y vibe to it but I actually kind of enjoy it I mean yeah the production is a little bit lackluster but the songwriting is pretty cool um I also think that it definitely has much more like I said that hard rock edge to the band, I think is getting more and more interesting as time goes on because this album doesn't have songs that are very overplayed or songs that at least most people do not do not hear on the radio all the time. So I think that makes this album a little bit more interesting. So going through the track listing here, so obviously the album opens up with Keep Yourself Alive, which for is a staple in the Queen fan base. And yeah, it's definitely a pretty cool opening rocker. I really dig Brian May's guitar. By the way, Brian May's guitar tone on this is completely solidified already ready by this record alone. And of course, you've got Freddie Mercury's operatic, operatic and bombastic voice really powering through the very kind of sketchy production on this. And I really dig, dig the song. I really dig their harmonies, especially on the chorus on this track. Uh, then we get into Doing All Right, which is kind of this kind of leftover smile track, or at least the band before Queen, which were Smile, which consisted obviously of Brian May and at least Roger Taylor and Tim Staffel at least. And that's before, before you know, Tim decided, decided to quit the band and they replaced it with her. Freddie Wilhelm was the replacement. So I think I think it's interesting. I think it's a pretty cool song. I mean, it's okay for what it is. Uh, I really don't care. Right? I don't really listen to it all that much, to be honest. But it's I never skip it when I listen to the record. So then, of course, we got Great King Rack, which I really dig a lot. It's definitely one of the highlights for me of the record. I think it's a pretty cool track. Uh, my favorite king is probably one of my personal favorites. I really dig the, the kind of, I, I guess you could say, I think it just has a really cool groove to it, especially in the mid 
midsection with the piano, the dr piano and the drums. So I, I really like that song a lot. Song a lot. No helping hand. Uh, but to me, the album, album quality-wise, I think picks up much more on the second half with already with Liar, which mm, has such a great riff and guitar solo from Brian May on it. And I just really, really dig it because it's something really ominous about this track that I really, really dig a lot. And I think that is probably the if I had to recommend one song to check out from this album, it's definitely Liar. Uh, then you got Night, Night Comes Down, which is, I guess it's okay. It's fine for what, what it is. Uh, of course, Modern Times Rock and Roll, probably my least favorite track on this. Uh, it's a Roger Taylor song, and he is definitely probably the weakest link in that chain, but he still get, he gets his moments on here. Uh, Son and Daughter. Yeah, uh, man, it's such a great and heavy track. It's arguably one of the heaviest tracks Queen's ever done. And I just love that song a lot. Jesus is pretty cool. I definitely like the harmonies on it. Um, it's definitely probably, yeah, I guess for some people it might be a slightly forgettable, but I actually pretty, think it's a pretty, pretty cool track. And then of course you finish the whole album off with the instru instrumental thing called Seven Seas Arrive, which is kind of different than what we will come to see on their next album. So if I do have to give this album a rating, I think I would give this one a four out of five. It's a really well put together songwriting wise. I think the musicianship is great on this. Obviously, Freddie's uh, pretty vocal performance on this is top notch. I mean, it's Freddie Mercury, what do you expect? Uh, he could sing you the phone book and you will be absolutely mesmerized. Uh, the one drawback, like I mentioned, is the production. I think that is probably the weakest element to this. But overall, I think it's a great record. And I think if you are a Queen fan, I don't think, I'm not exactly sure this is the place where you want to start. I think you'd rather start with something like A Night at the Opera or News of the World or or even even maybe jazz. I think those albums are, or actually I think also even Sheer Heart Attack. I mean, most of the other 70s records are good places to start, but this one you might want to come back to towards, more towards the end, I think. So with that said, uh, th this is my quick little review of, I guess, well, a 10 minute review of Queen's self-titled debut. With that said, I'm gonna head out and I hope everyone is enjoying their day, evening, whatever. And make sure to like, comment, subscribe and get more people to share this video. Make sure that we get more people into this because you know, the more, the merrier.